Hi, I'm Sing Ai Shu, Steinway artist and current artist in residence at All Angels Church in New York City. And my guest is Seth Little, the director of music and art, and a fellow parent and a musical colleague. And I'm so excited that we're working on this project of the practice of listening. I am thrilled that Sing Ai has signed on to be our artist in residence because as a as a musician, as a performer, and as an educator, you've developed tremendous skills around listening, and you teach people to listen uh, through your conscious listening uh, seminars and other tools, but also um, that overlaps so tremendously with the Christian life in general, our practice of, of seeing people as valuable, our practice of loving which is fundamental to the Christian faith, um, but also specifically in this particular season at All Angels, we are rebuilding. I think it aligns really, really well with what All Angels is up to as a parish, with where Jarrett, our rector, and, uh, and our community is, is going. So uh, thank you for being with us this year. Thanks for all the work you're doing to set it up, and I'm really, really excited. I'm so excited just listening to the way you talk about things and uh, learning about how your perspective on the whole mission of cultivating listening um, is so, it's so interesting for me. The jazz you were talking about, I guess maybe it's just that the jazz, the, the spontaneity of improv is about listening to the moment the possibility of the moment and, and what can happen without thinking so much about the planned. Well, sometimes they have planned licks that they throw in there, mm -hmm. but it's more about really being open to listening for what might happen. Yeah. Some of my heroes in the faith are folks like, like Madeline Langle, who... Who is worshiping here. She worshiped here yeah. in All Angels before my time. But one of the things that I love about her is this expectation of really the impossible. Whatever is, is considered impossible to me now, um, I should, I, as a person of faith, I should expect that, that that can be reframed in an instant. There's a personal God who is a person who is fundamentally good and loving and generous and, so, and creative. And so the impossible is normal for people of Christian faith, at least it should be. And uh, I love trying to take that in. And there's something about even what I hear you saying with listening, and especially in jazz, I think maybe this is where it can flesh out, the um, listening for something that, that could be maybe, maybe even a surprising something I, I'm expecting to be surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting for there to be a new horizon sort of breached um, in great, I mean, I think in great jazz, that's, that's the hope that we're going to push to new heights mm -hmm. in improvisation. How seldom do we have a, a shadow of that kind of hope in our human interactions, our relationships? How often do I go into a, a tense sort of conflict-laden relationship or relational context Thanksgiving dinner with the family, maybe in a in an election year, or or come into church space, or I, I go as a person of faith into a public space, you know, and it's just charged, and I have so little expectation that I'm going to be surprised here. Yeah. I think I know how it's going to go, and instead of being an opening of myself, listening to both my body, but listening for cues of of surprise, with the expectation of being surprised. Maybe hope is the word. Listening and hope. Um, I close off the possibility of it. Just foreclose it at the outset. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the norm. Maybe there's something with that, that jazz mode that is instructive here for the project of listening. Say, you know what? I, I want to come and expect to be surprised. Expect to learn. Expect to grow. And I, I would say that translates right into the classical world as well because you can play a phrase a million different ways and you should go into a concert feeling like oh I get to hear what 
this person thinks about this phrase. Yeah. And it should be that same level of spontaneity if it's done right, you know. But but it has to it, there's a there is a, a level of training in the the listening. How do you how do you inform someone's expectations before they even go to the concert hall? And too often it's about like, okay, I expect this person to be perfect. I expect to be impressed. And that just kills the performance mm. because like what, what I'm trying to do with my conscious listening seminars is to say, um, we share this ownership of this moment, right? Like you bring your expectations and your own personal connections with your own lives and, and you bring all of that with you into this moment. And then, and then you have to own making the work of making the connections. And, and seeing, like, what can you hear and how do you connect rather than what are you going to do to wow me and how mm. fast are you going to play or, oh, I've heard that piece before, so therefore it can't be interesting. Well, no, actually, it should be interesting um, if it's said in a really genuine way that is as if it was being played the very first time. Mm -hmm. And that's what every performance really needs to be. My vision centers around uh, the arts being representative of the human imagination. And the work of imagination is absolutely essential to the life of faith in ways that we don't often understand um, or that haven't been held up traditionally as valuable. And yet, um, we are imaginative beings made in the image of an imaginative God. The possibility that that God is truly engaging with us. Those, those require imagination. That's creative work. And it's creative work that we don't have to do in a vacuum. You know, we inherit a tradition. We have scriptures. We, have, we inherit a lot by participating in a community that remembers. But there's still this work that, that both individually and collectively we have to actively create to help us see one another, to he listen to one another, to share stories, to recognize, I think, commonalities over difference. Um, and maybe to heal from, there's a heal. lot of pain. There. Absolutely, oh yeah. my goodness, yeah. It's, it's cathartic. Have you, in your own experiences, discovered that your listening capabilities has increased with practice? Oh, yes, gosh. For me personally, absolutely. I keep thinking of my kids right now because I had a moment just yesterday where I didn't lead with listening. For the most part, we have a culture in my house of asking questions, giving people a chance to voice a response. And when they do that, tensions are de-escalated. People that we feel seen and heard, feel known and loved. And, uh, and so that ends up producing a sort of virtuous cycle culturally when we practice this habit of listening and then we, and it's reinforced and then we practice it some more. We notice when it doesn't work quite as well as it should. We add some new, you know, we adjust tact a little bit and then we practice it again and then it becomes this virtuous cycle that becomes a culture, a healthy culture. And for the most part, I think, I'm sure we've got a lot to learn, but in my house with my kids, I've seen our listening improve because of that cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then things become quicker, uh, so much quicker, easier to access, and, and you hear more because you practiced. Yeah, you know that's interesting. You say that. I think, I think you do hear more because you practiced, and also there's a there's a case to be made there for learning the practice early and getting good at it as soon as possible because there are things that, as a parent, again, I have access to with my kids right now that I just wouldn't have access to had we not had a history of listening, you know? It, not only because kids get into certain phases of life where they're less apt to talk and talk to their parents, or, but also just because there, there's, there's this cumulative effect Trust is built over time mm -hmm. through being listened to. And, mm -hmm. and so I think there's a case to be made for building these skills and habits as early as possible because the, 
benefits continue to grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. It's like putting putting a savings account together and waiting 30 years for compound interest. You know, you you get exponential returns on the investment early on. That's awesome. So I'd like to invite our viewers to listen to the people around you and see if you can hear something more um, with this intention of listening. And uh, we hope that you will join us with uh, three public events this year at All Angels Church in New York City and uh, also with online YouTubes and blogs and other related events. So thank you very much. Thanks, Eli.